one. Hi everyone, this is Gary Wilson and welcome to this week's live Path to Prosperity webinar. We got a special guest, Shannon Goldsmith from sunny Southern California. He's gonna show us some pretty cool stuff online, uh, but a little bit of housekeeping. So some of you are, are relatively new, some of you are brand new, and we've got some veterans on the, on the webinar too from all over US and Canada. And for those of you who are new, if you could always just remember, uh, we, we recognize you can't be on everyone live, we get that. So you get the recording the next day, and always look for the email from Beverly and uh, read whatever she gives you because a lot of times she's um, giving you updates to systems, scheduling updates, things like that, content updates. So you definitely want to use that to stay, stay abreast of things. Um, and also, of course, you get the recording of the webinar. So uh, this format we've been using now for about a month, we switched to Zoom from GoToWebinar. We might go back to GoToWebinar. We're just debating that right now. As soon as we left, they made some major upgrades. Go, go figure. But in any case, um, always look for those updates from Beverly. And also, if you're on you, by default, you're in mute mode, unless you're a panelist like, like Shannon or I. Um, so I can see your chats, your questions coming in. I'm going to monitor those. Uh, so use the chat box to type in your questions, and I'll field them. Uh, Shannon will see them, but I'll field them for her. So in any case, without further ado, first off, I want to say thank you, Shannon, for taking your uh, precious time to help out your fellow investor agents, investors and agents around the U.S. and Canada. <laughs> so uh, welcome <laughs> aboard. If you wouldn't mind, just, just give everybody a 60-second, you know, hi, I'm Shannon, here's where I am, and uh, here's what I'm doing, that kind of thing. And that'll give a little bit of context, and then we can go right into screen sharing and some content. Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's really good to be here. Um, it's my pleasure to share, you know, all the information um, with everyone tonight, and I hope it's very helpful. Um, I am a real estate agent based in Beverly Hills, California. Um, I started in real estate in 2004 working for an investor developer um, and did that for about six years. And then I transitioned into residential sales. And um, after being introduced to Gary, I have decided that I wanted to specialize in working with investors. So through working with Gary, I've learned how to find and generate data um, to be used to analyze so we can target areas that make the most sense for rentals and flips. So tonight, what I'm gonna do is show everybody how to find and generate that data um, so they can apply the criteria that Gary has taught us in order to target the areas that make the most sense for rentals in your location. Excellent, great, great description. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and guys, I just wanna tell you too, for everyone watching and listening, um, the email that comes out tomorrow, we're also going to have some attachments. Thank Thanks to Shannon. She's written up some instructions for you to follow. To follow. Um, so in Canada, of course, we have, of course, National Association of Realtors and similar, similar tool. So we just, you have to use the equivalent tool up when we're up in Canada, uh, but it's still from the same source. You just, everybody, you know, there's, there's, I think, over 400 MLS systems in existence, um, but they are based on four different platforms. So, RPR works with all four of those platforms, but what I can't tell you is that I've used every single one of the 400 across the US and Canada. I've, just, I've seen them used, they all work. Um, so if you have any questions after this, we could do a strategy call, just let me know. So, so Shane, if you wouldn't mind, do you see where you can, if you hi, drag your cursor across the panel at the bottom, you see share, that the word share with, the, it's a green box that says share with an arrow? Yes, I see it. So if you click on that, you can share any other screen you have up, any other active session you have. So if you have your MLS system active or RPR active, you can bring it up and then click on share. It'll show you a panel. And then you highlight the screen you want to share with everyone. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yep. Okay, cool. So I okay, can see. Good. Yep. And by the way, so we're looking at U.S. Senate, uh, U.S. Census guys. Canada has what's called Stats Canada, Stats Canada. And just a brief plug for, for my fellow Canadians. Um, the Canadian systems are generally more sophisticated than the U.S. systems, but the U.S. has more data available. So it's kind of like a coinky dink. So uh, when you see this U.S. census, there's a, an equivalent process for uh, Stats Canada. So sorry, sorry, Shane, I just wanted to plug in because we got people from both countries here. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So go okay. ahead. Okay. Um All right. Perfect. So um, just to sort of put some context around everything. Um, you know, what Gary has taught us is to start broad and then through the process of elimination, 
narrow down your scope into more targeted areas. So what that looks like is you go from a broad region down to city, down to zip code, down to neighborhood, and then finally down to the property level. So for me, working out of Beverly Hills, I started with LA County, um, and then I broke apart LA County into city level data, and then from there, zip code level data, and then from there, neighborhood data. And I use what I found in my experience in trying to get my hands on this data, um, I use different sources for each. So for example, for city data, I found that the census website was the easiest and the best um, to get the kind of detail that I was looking for. Um, and then RPR has a, uh, an, a report called a trade area report, which I found to be the most detailed and thorough for zip code level data. And then from there, Gary um, has shared many times the value of using Melissa data to look at, to fine tune down to the neighborhood level. Um, so for tonight, I'm just gonna focus on showing you census website and then RPR. And you might be wondering why the heck would we take the time to walk you through a census website or RPR? And we're doing it because it actually isn't obvious how to find this information. It actually took me several hours to figure out the census website and to figure out where the heck to get these reports. Um, it does take a little bit of time to navigate the website to get to what you need, but um, you know, I've, I'll take you through it step by step and once you get there, it's worth the effort. So um, with that being said, I am going to show you how to do this. I'm just gonna grab my notes here. Um, now Gary has taught us, you know, you have the option of going to each municipality directly and to each city's website. A lot of cities will provide this demographic um, and socioeconomic information on their websites. But for me, because LA County has 88 incorporated cities within it, that meant I'd have to go to 88 different city websites and try and navigate and find their data. So I found that it was easier just to go straight to census. Okay, so here we go. Um, the first step is go to the census homepage. And again, you're gonna be sent all the links and the how-tos on this. Um, you're gonna look for this screen for quick facts, access local data. And click on that and hopefully that should load. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to enter the city that you're interested in looking at. And so for me, I'm gonna to go to Long Beach because I know Long Beach um, is a decent rental area. So you can see how it's loaded here in this table. Um, see, I already forgot, okay, yeah. The next step is to click on chart right here. View selected locations. And then this is where it got really confusing, but if you actually hold your cursor over this uh, little microscope and you click on here, it's going to bring you to this pop-up screen. And right on top under um, estimates based on a sample of households over a five-year period, I found that it's these reports right here, the social characteristics, economic, and housing. These are the reports that are the most useful um, in analyzing areas for rental properties. You can look through and look at these other reports, you know, if you decide you want to, but um, you'll see what I mean as you click on them, that they're not all as detailed as the reports that we're gonna take a look at. So um, first report, let's go into housing. Sorry, it's just taking a minute to load. That's okay. Of course, it would be slow when I'm on this webinar with you, Gary. <laughs> That's okay. Well, there's also a delay too, because we're, we're on literally opposite coast at the moment, so there's a delay too. That's true, okay. All right, perfect. So initially what's gonna happen is it's gonna pull up a table um, and as you can see, it's housing characteristics between this time period. And when you come down here, um, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a table 
um, by default with your state that you're searching in and then the city that you're searching in. And then you can see the different categories. Um, what I do is I generate a PDF file with a table that's more simplified and export that and look at the PDF rather than this um, because I find that it's got a lot of extra stuff in there that you know it just it makes it harder to look at the data. So um, what I would recommend you do once you have this information is I recommend you modify the table to include county level data and then to eliminate these extra columns here that you don't really need because it, it makes it look confusing. So the first thing that I would do is go to add or remove geographies. And I'm gonna add Los Angeles County. Okay, and under your geography selections here, you'll see what's gonna show up on this table. I choose to deselect California, the state level, because I find that that's too broad, I really don't need it. Um, and then show table. So now you can see you've got county level data and you've got city level data and you can compare it side by side. The last thing I do is um, eliminate these extra columns here that I find are quite confusing to the eye when you're trying to scan the chart and look at the data. So you wanna click on modify table, which I just did. And then down here, you can deselect these columns, margin of error and percent margin of error. And do that for the city level as well. Okay, so now it's ready to go. So now you want to um, download. Um, you have the option of downloading in a spreadsheet or as a PDF, um, which is a presentable document. I would highly recommend doing a presentable document. The, the spreadsheet isn't really that easy to read. Um, select PDF, landscape, hit okay. and download. And instead of clicking download, which is what you would do, I'm just going to cancel that and I'm going to go to the PDF, which I've got it right here, so I can just show you this report. So this is the, an example of housing characteristics that you can get using the census website. And I find it extremely detailed. Um, sorry, it's just taking a minute to load. Okay, so obviously occupied housing units, things like vacancy rates, which are important to know. Um, you can look at the housing stock, so units and structure. So for example, I was helping an investor um, that was looking for multifamily. Um, and so when you, you can go by city and you can look at cities and see you know, what their housing stock is like. And actually, surprisingly, some cities really don't have a lot of small multifamily um, units. So it's good to go in here and take a look at that. Um, you can also look at the age of the housing stock, the year the structure is built. That's really helpful. Number of bedrooms. And then this is the number that I really like to look at, um, owner versus renter occupied. Um, you know, Gary, I don't know if you want to chime in here, but obviously um, sort of a benchmark that he's established is areas that are about 50% owner to renter occupied are good areas. If you get to two thirds um, renter occupied to owner occupied, that's a premium rental area. So this is a really good number to look at. Yeah, it's just, there's a, definitely a sweet spot. And it, I mean, it's broadly, when you're investing in rentals or your clients are investing in rentals, if you can be in an area where the percentage of renters is greater than one third of the population and less than two thirds of the population in that middle third range, that's where you've, you usually you have the, the, be, the easiest time buying and investing in rentals and helping people manage rentals. There are exceptions. Like if you're ever around hospital systems, university systems, or particularly a teaching, teaching hospital, um, like for some of the folks up in uh, Canada, uh, McMaster's, one of my nieces is a McMaster's and it's uh, so it's close to you, Jerry, not too far from you, Lewis. And um, those rentals there are generally going to be pretty stable. And you might have areas where there's 80, 90% rentership, 
but boy, if you can get those grad students and interns and things like that, you've got a pretty good rental business going on, you know? Totally. Okay, so, um, so you can, you know, just go through this report. Obviously, there's a lot more useful information. Um, it's pretty detailed that you can just take a look at, you know, on your own time. But um, there are two other reports that I wanted to share with you. Um, the economic report. Okay. And to pull that report, it's the same process that you used. Um, you'll just follow the same steps. But um, obviously, you know, economics is uh, an important piece of information. You can learn what the major industries are there, or at least um, what the labor force is doing. Um, I highlighted, oh, um, the unemployment rate. You can find the unemployment rate for the area. Um, here's a good one, cash public assistance. Um, Gary, I know you've mentioned many times the areas that um, where there's not a lot of cash public assistance usually indicates a good area to invest in. Yep. Um, obviously there's income info, which is important. Um, you've mentioned too, I believe that you said, what is it, if there's income levels that are above the, the national average income, that generally indicates a good area to um, find rentals in. <laughs> Okay. Hey, hey, real quick, uh, Shannon. Um, I'm not sure if some people are saying they're still on the, what they're seeing is still the top of the stats page. I wonder if it's because when you went to the deeper level, um, we had to do another screen share. So let me just do a quick check here on the panelists. Hey guys, if, you, if you're seeing a screen now, um, it has the, let's see, it says 2013 to 2017 American Community Survey five-year estimates right towards the top. And then down the bottom third, it starts, says uh, housing occupancy. If you can let me know that, guys, I'll know that you're up, up to speed on that. It could be the delay in um, the, the server. Uh, yeah, another, hey, Shana, do, another, do a, another screen share. Okay. And let's see if that's a, a refresh everything. Yeah, I actually, I have to say that I think I made that mistake. I didn't, I didn't do a new screen share on the actual PDF. So I've done uh, that now. So just let me know if you guys can see it. They did. They, they're all saying they can see it now. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. That's the only thing about Zoom. I, that's why we're kind of debating about the different platforms here. And um, you got to, it's with a go-to webinar, it's just automatic. We don't have to worry about it. But with Zoom, we're getting used to it. And that's one of the things we, we keep forgetting, you know? So, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So everybody's on board here. Um, so anyway, so um, these are what the reports look like. And I would, you know, you can just scroll through and take your time and look at everything. There's a ton of information here, but obviously um, things like unemployment rates, um, income info, cash public assistance, occupations, industry, you're going to find that all here in the economic um, report. Mm -hmm. um, the other report that I would highly recommend downloading is the social report. Um, it'll talk about things like, can everybody see that? Yeah, it looks like, the, looks like they can, yeah. Okay. Um, social report will show things like um, family size. Um, you know, if there's a lot of kids, families, singles, um, education, and um, as well, the population, non-institutionalized population with a disability, which Gary, you've brought that up a few times, could be an opportunity for ADA grants, right? Absolutely. Well, I had, I've had a lot of success with that, guys. Um, in fact, I did a podcast interview this morning with a um, one of my mastermind members does assisted living investing. He invests in assisted living homes. So these are homes in neighborhoods that, that are uh, designated for assisted living and his wife happens to be a physical therapist. And we talked about that. And I, I had properties where, guys, I was getting three, three times prevailing market rental rates for my ADA compliant units. And the funny thing is I didn't have to do anything. The ADA would come in and do all the work and all I had to do was sign a piece of paper. It was, it really was a grant for the tenant. 
and then the tenants stayed longer, paying those higher rents, and the ADA would even bring it back to its non-ADA compliant state when that tenant moved out. Of course, I never wanted to do that. I'm thinking, well, why would I do that if I'm getting three times the rent? So tremendous opportunities, guys, in those areas. And just remember to think outside the box, always ask questions, and if you're not certain, just email me, bring it up on a weekly webinar, and uh, we'll check into it and see what's possible. But ADA compliant units, assisted living, you can uh, you can take a market that's um, you know the, where the general rental market is pretty competitive, go into these other venues and and uh, do a pretty good business. Okay, so thanks, Shana, for bringing it up. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, um, so that's that's it. I mean, other than me like walking you through step by step each of the each of the bits of data here, I think that you all can just pull this information for the cities that apply to you and take a look at it yourself. But there's a lot of really good um, detail here. Again, I found that, you know, different cities, the, they all, you know, provided different levels of, of data. Um, I always prefer to have more data than less. So I just find that using these reports through the census, um, it gives you, you know, more than what you'll get in a lot of other cities. Um, so are there any questions so far about census? Because that's, that's basically it for the census website. It looks like uh, no new questions. Everybody's just saying they're, they're, they're caught up on the screens now, which is good. So. Okay, well, that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> that's important. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, don't, yeah, don't be shy, guys. If you have questions, just type them in. I'll, I'll, keep, uh, I'll keep them current. So. Okay, I'm going to switch over back to internet okay and we are going to go to rpr hold on just a second oh my god hang on okay sorry guys i'm just trying to get to rpr but the zoom toolbox is not letting me get to it hang on okay Okay, so um, the next step, once you've, once you've zeroed in on your cities and you found some cities that look like they could potentially be um, prime rental areas, then you can further break those cities down to the zip code level. Once you are ready to do the zip code level, I find that using RPR's trade area reports is the most useful for that. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. Um, you do need to be a member of the National Association of Realtors to have access to RPR, I believe. So um, if you are not a realtor and you don't have access, you can share the how-to instructions with your realtor and ask them to pull these reports for you. I, I can almost guarantee they probably don't know that these exist. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to access them now. So um, from the home screen, you're going to want to click on commercial. You're going to click on reports. And um, in this box here, you have the option of typing in a city or a zip code. So I just typed in the zip code, which is Long Beach. Um, you're going to want to select the trade area report and then scroll down and you're gonna click run report. I'm not going to do that because it takes like three minutes for the report to generate. So I'm going to switch screen and show you what the report looks like once it's generated. Okay. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to find it once you're used to using it. So I'm going to switch back here. Okay, so this is what the trade area report looks like. Um, let me know if you guys can't see it. But it's for the entire zip code of 90808. And this is what I like about it. So it pulls a lot of information from different sources, from Census um, and a few other um, companies, uh, one called ESRI. And ESRI does these, um, does market segmentation based on socioeconomic and de demographic data. And they've come up with um, these well-defined uh, consumer markets. And this report is actually geared towards commercial. Um, a lot of people, a lot of commercial real estate agents will find this useful because it, it's basically, you know, it tells you things like 
how these people like to spend their time, you know, where they spend their money, what they like to do. Um, so in terms of rental areas, if you've picked an area, this is amazing information to have because it tells you who you're going to be advertising to and basically how you can, you know, configure your advertising to speak to that, that avatar. So um, if you look down here on the, on the second page, it talks about this consumer segmentation. Um, it talks about life mode and then how it's defined. And um, these are the different tapestry segments that make up the zip code, Pleasantville, City Lights, Urban Chic, Savvy Suburbanites, Exurbanites. And you can look through this um, summary here and it'll show you what proportion of the population fall into these categories. Basically a summary of household income, net worth, home value, that's a bit weird. That looks a little low. Um, home, home, excuse me, home ownership rates, employment, et cetera, et cetera. But as you carry down through the report, it will explain to you the different qualities of these um, segmented markets. So our neighborhood, um, generally on the suburban periphery of large metropolitan areas, primarily in middle Atlantic or Pacific states. One thing to keep in mind is these market segments are generalized over um, the United States. So some of these percentages, this is for the entire United States. So I wouldn't take them as you know, applying directly to that zip code, but it can give you a general idea of the characteristics of this population. Um, but it talks about older single family homes, two thirds built before 1970s, lowest percentage of vacant housing units, um, you know, they talk about things like prefer imported SUVs, serviced by a gas station or car dealer, invest in conservative securities and contribute to charities, work on home improvement, remodel. I mean, it, it just goes on and on about some pretty interesting stuff. Enjoy outdoor gardening, going to the beach, visiting theme parks, all this, all those kinds of things. You know, you may be more than what you need, but I actually found it very interesting. It really kind of helps, you know, you to see who's living in these areas. Um, you know, it talks about education, unemployment rates, all of that. And then, um, so it'll, it'll break down each market segment so you can get to know them in more detail. And once you get through that, then it's gonna get into data that's similar to what you're gonna find on the census website, um, population data. This is really good because it can show you if the population is growing or if it's decreasing. So they're projecting that it's gonna be slowing down, which is interesting. Um, obviously population growth is, I mean, wouldn't you say population growth is a good number to look at, Gary? Yeah, yeah. a lot of times what we're looking at, if you look, um, so in your area, Shannon, um, Palmdale is very attractive right now because of the growth that's going on there in industry. So they're, they're attracting, building, creating new jobs, um, driving up, you know, demand for housing, rentals and, and ownership, by the way, too. And also um, uh, San Pedro down along your Long Beach, down at the bottom of, the, of that um, peninsula there. Um, two, two areas that I've come up off the top of my head, where when you look at the overall picture and, st and statistics, uh, job growth, uh, salary growth, um, population growth, those are good pretenses for what's coming up in the next three, five, or ten years. So, in some areas like up in Toronto, where I, I I'm, you know, where I live um, part time, things have gotten so expensive over the years because it's been tremendous, almost explosive growth that's still occurring in London where I live and in, in, in the States, um, I mean, there's a number of areas and, and people a lot of times in California will say, well, I, you can't invest here, it's too expensive, but always remember, wherever people rent, people invest. And wherever people are, you see job growth and, and demand for housing, there's your opportunity. Prices is, is, is relative to the area, it's not, it's not a, price isn't a driving factor, the driving factor are the things you just talked about, Shannon. So um, kind of went long-winded there, but the point is, is um, you know, people aren't moving to an area um, just because it's pretty. They need to have jobs, <laughs> you know? So exactly. they, the two usually go hand in hand, you know? Right, right, exactly. Um, so here's other great information, um, population by age. It really breaks it down for you here, which is really nice. 
Um, obviously, you know, areas where you have a lot of people in the prime rental age groups is excellent. So that's very helpful. Okay. Um, then it gets into things about married, unmarried, widowed, divorced, um, income data, again. And it, it may feel like some of it is repeat data, but remember this is actually down to the zip code level. Um, and it is interesting, once you actually start to, to pick it apart and get really detailed about it, it does become quite clear, you know, what areas do make sense to put your investment dollars and what areas, you know, you're, you may not have um, the greatest odds of success. So here you've got unemployment rates, industry, this is really good. Mm -hmm. Education and healthcare. Yep. And look at the top two there. Education and healthcare. And remember I said a while ago, if you can be around hospital systems, university systems, you're gonna do pretty good right here. Well, not even looking at this area, look at the top two categories. <laughs> education yeah. and healthcare. There, there you go. You know, it's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, then lots of great information about education, just breaks it apart, compares it to county and state level. Hey, Shana, we have a question from Lori Gagney. Hi, Lori. Lori's asking, what are the prime rental ages? And Lori, it's actually, that's a, um, depends on the area that, that, you know, you've got macro economics and microeconomics. So, uh, depending on where you are, Within it, let's just take a city like Boston. I just, by the way, guys, say this is really cool. I just spoke at Boston on uh, June 30th. I got to be in front of a couple of hundred doctors and stuff like that. Was and I'm the only guy there that's not a doctor. <laughs> that was pretty neat. But back to the, the the class here. In Boston, you have some major universities: MIT, Harvard, Cambridge, uh, of course, Boston University. And so around there, the primary age is between 18 and 21. You can look at census data and see that it bears it out. But we have other areas where there's people, the average age, Lori, is like in their mid 50s, like 55 to 65. And that's the primary rental age. And what we're finding out is a report that came out several years ago, just specifically on people 55 and older. I'm sorry, 55, to, I think maybe it was just 55 in general is what it was. And for the first time they were running that report, for the first time, 55-year-olds were choosing to rent more than they were choosing to buy. And it wasn't because their 401k was wiped out. So that's what we all thought. It was because it was lifestyle. They didn't want to shovel snow. They didn't want to cut grass. They didn't want to fix things. They don't want to be in an old folks' home. They want to, they're kayaking, biking, hiking. They're traveling. They're doing stuff, and they want to live life. And so they're looking for, like, cluster homes and patio homes. Um, and he has, so, so always study the data. So the answer to your question, Lori, use the things that Lori, that, that, I'm sorry, Shannon's showing you tonight, Lori, and you can determine this for a particular area and you can get data on a broad scale or a small scale, but start broadly and narrow things down. Just like Shannon said, start broad and narrow it down from there. So let the data show you what's happening and then you'll know what you can do with your marketing. That this is critical, critical stuff. It's, this is where the really good agents separate themselves, guys. We always gather data first. Then we know exactly what marketing to use and how to narrow down our costs. So, Lori, I sorry I went long-winded on that. <laughs> um, but I hope that that helps you. So I would, I would say you can Google, um, like you can look in your, a lot of times your planning commission data, and they will give you the same information because it also comes from census. The same thing up in Canada. We, I'm in Middlesex County. we got a great planning commission. They take data from Stats Canada. And we can see the percentages of people renting by age group. It's amazing, you know. So excellent question, Lori. That means you're thinking like a Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So uh, education comparison, we went through that. Goes all the way to the graduate level. Um, and then there's things here, you can see obviously it's geared towards um, commercial customers and agents, but um, commute times, how people get to work. Oh no, sorry, we're still in the residential. Home value comparisons. Um, 
12 month change in medium estimated home value. One thing I will say about RPR, RPR is pretty awesome. And Gary, I think that you've mentioned it before, but I find that when I use RPR, some of the data that's from my MLS hasn't uploaded or synced with RPR. Yeah. I've even found it where there's like a month of a lag and I've even called the MLS and I've even called NAR to be like, what's going on? Like, you know, why, why isn't the data talking? You know, because I, I count on it. Um, a lot of people count on it. Um, so I wouldn't really uh, bet the farm on some of these values and percentages. I find that um, they're not always the most accurate. Median listing price, things like that. I mean, I. I like to use RPR for doing um, CMAs. I do um, pretty detailed CMAs and there's a, a sales comparison report where it allows you to use like an adjustment um, table like an appraiser would. Mm -hmm. And I do that for my clients so that way they can have more accurate CMAs. Okay, yeah, and you're, you're right. We found that um, RPR doesn't interface with all the different MLS systems. Mm -hmm. Equally yeah, this is where it gets into the commercial stuff where it's talking about best retail businesses. But, you know, it kind of just gives you insight into, you know, where these. Well, the cool thing is we've all paid for it. I mean, every, I mean, most of us are licensees and through our dues, we pay for these systems. So they're free. I, I would, I definitely use them. I mean, I would recommend you guys use them. There's other paid services, but always start here because it's probably enough of what you need. Remember, real estate is a commodity doesn't change as rapidly as other commodities. It's a slower moving commodity when it comes to, to changing market information, mark changing market data. So um, great place to, to start. And if you don't, I know Shannon, you have some of the reports you showed me back a few months ago when you first showed me this, I was like, man, this is outstanding stuff. And it allowed you to narrow down to specific towns, just like specific neighborhoods. Um, and that's really what we need as, as agents to support our investors or for investors ourselves like me um, to make really smart investment decisions and use the data to drive our decisions and drive our marketing. And more importantly, if we are serving others to help our investors make the best decisions with their money, because that's how you build long-term relationships. So um, uh, yeah, anyway, so Shane, yeah, anything else you have to show, examples, stuff like that? I mean, feel free. I'm going to keep looking for questions here. I think we're caught up so far. Uh, yes, we're caught up on questions, so that's good. Yeah, um, I mean, that's basically it. That's, that's how you generate the data. And then I, I basically just apply the criteria that I've learned through Gary's training, um, you know, on how to analyze and use that data and apply it to my local area. Um, one thing that I've done, Gary, I, I don't know if this is what you were talking about, but I'm just going to try and pick it up really quick and share okay. it. Um, I had to, because there's literally 88 cities in LA County, um, I was trying to figure out how the heck can I like compare them and find out which ones are best? How can I put the numbers side by side? So I created a spreadsheet, which I'm going to pull up for you guys in just a second, um, which you guys might Oops, find helpful. Um, yeah. Okay, hey, so way, hopefully you can see that. Chris but Lee, I just basically made a spreadsheet um, and listed all the cities. Hey, Shannon, while you're doing it, I just want a quick plug here, but Chris Latham is in the commercial development program we have going on right now. And so we we literally we're just talking about some of this stuff the other day. So Chris, this is why I want to have you on tonight's sessions. You can, so look at the information. This is all commercial traffic counts. I mean, my gosh, this is like, this is Mecca for people who, are, who want to step into the commercials. Any of you out there, if you want to follow Chris Latham steps and eventually move in the commercial, this is a real easy way to help you do that um, safely, easily without spending a lot of money. I mean, when you, once you're in the commercial, things get a lot more expensive, but Getting to that point, you can do this, keep your cost down, and have access to all the same information. So, in any case, yeah. yeah. So, thank you. Sorry, Shannon. Keep going with what you're doing. This, this is, yeah, I think this is it. This looks awesome. 
Okay. Um, yeah. And so this is where I just, I took the data. I mean, it, it took a long time and I'm kind of a data nerd, but I found that this was the easiest way for me to, to really look at everything and compare. And so um, I just picked apart what I found to be like the most important initially, um, owner versus runner occupied, vacancy rates, um, rent controls big here in LA, um, you know, percentage of household income greater than the national median, percent with supplemental uh, social security income with cash public assistance, non-institutionalized with disability, and then number of two unit and three to four unit buildings. Um, and like I said, you can see some areas have very few, you know, small multifamily. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just went through and listed all, I, I plugged in all the data and then went back through and highlighted ones in different colors so that way I could just easily, you know, see them with my own eyes, like, you know, which I would want to spend the time to research more. I found that once I took the time to do this, taking all the data pulled from those reports, which I will be really honest is, is pretty damn time consuming, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it because it really helps you fine tune your efforts. Um, it has given me a ton of confidence because now when I'm working with rental investors, I know that I'm guiding them to areas that actually do make sense. We're not just throwing, yeah, yeah. you know, darts at a wall or the shotgun approach. This is like a laser targeted approach. It's, I, I actually feel, um, well, I have to thank you, Gary, because this has been some of the best information that I've learned about. Um, <laughs> I, in just the short time that I've been using it, and the reactions that I've received from people, um, and most recently, even some lenders, you know, they're saying things like, I can't believe you know all this stuff. It, it's, not, it's not very common that, that we real estate agents are aware of this information. Yeah, so if you yeah. do take the time to learn it and apply it, you will be so far ahead of the curve. Um, and I've just learned that in the short time that I've been doing it. So I, I mean, it's, it's worth the time and the effort. Yeah. I mean, look, look at the third line, Alhambra, 40% owned, 60% rent. The vacancy rate on rentals is lower than the vacancy rate on ownership, almost by half. It's almost non-existent. It's less than 1%. Um, you get, you get to see the number of two unit buildings, the number of three to four unit buildings. I mean, that's a, boy, if I was out there right now, that's where I'd be plunking my money down. One of the, that would be one of the areas, absolutely, you know. Hey, um, hey Christian's asking, Shane, did, did the, all the data on the spreadsheet come from RPR or did any of it come from the U.S. Census, you know, or do you remember when you built it? Yeah, so this, um, for this spreadsheet that I built, this all came from Census. So Census, okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Christian, for asking the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is probably one of the most valuable things I think I've ever seen. You know, and it just goes to show, look at Beverly Hills, almost identical percentage, 40% owned, almost 60% rent. So again, where people say, they always, I always hear this excuse, well, it's too expensive in this area, that area, Toronto, Vancouver, San Francisco, you know, New York. And I'm not saying it's not expensive. I'm not, I'm not debating that. But I will tell you, clearly the data shows you that it's not a primary factor. It's only in our minds that we think it's primary. The primary factor is the fact that two thirds, four, three fifths of the population, 60% of the population is renting in these areas. And if you're in New York City, my gosh, there's neighborhoods where it's, it's greater than 80%. I mean, the average percentage of renters in Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn is, is all around 70%. In West Beverly Hills, Shannon, it was it was over eighty. It was eighty-two percent. You know, renters. Yeah. One of the yeah. nicest areas in the, in the world. You know. So, in any case, uh, it just goes to show you guys. Um, take the time to do what Shannon's done, so you can make data-driven decisions. And I know it's tough because our brains, our emotional side, saying, "Well, I know this, and I did this, and I bought there, and I sold there," and that's all true. But when you look at the data, it shows you that sometimes what our brains are telling us are not exactly the right things to do. The data, your data doesn't lie, you know. Um, so, so in any case, Shannon, uh, so some of what's going on out, out there is I know you've got um, one of your clients, your brother has been uh, wanting to invest. So now you can show them precisely where to invest his hard-earned money. Mm -hmm. And you could probably do this 
um, anywhere we are licensed. If you're, you know, you, you might not have access to all the MLS systems across California, but you could go up into Sacramento. We've got some, a lot of agents up there that have been trained, you know, to, to investor agents have been trained. And so we know like Stockton's a great area. Brentwood, California is a great area. The, there's two Brentwoods. I'm talking about Brentwood up in East Bay, east of uh, um, San Francisco Bay. In fact, the guy that, uh, the co-founder of Bigger Pockets, David Green, just put his license there at the Brentwood office. <laughs> he's one of my go, he's one of my go bonus mastermind members. And, uh, so in any case, um, he, he's in it, he's part of it. And I can tell you, he's not one of the top performers because he, he guesses, he uses data. We, we talked about this at our annual event. Um, but can you think of examples? So like when we look at this, Shannon, uh, I'm looking for an area like Calabasas. I know Calabasas cause I did a, I did a, a referral there. Um, Clearly, it's strong home ownership areas, 70% own, 30% rent. Um, and I know the referral I did, it was, uh, I gave it to David Abbas. He's up there. Um, Many Adios is the team leader, I think. In any case, so David took the transaction. Nobody could sell it. He's a $1.5 million host. Used to belong to a, um, uh, she's a retired Hollywood producer. Great A movies, stuff we I go see at the theaters. And I, she, she and I are friends. I happened to meet her about five years ago, I think, at a conference. Uh, so I used the data to figure out, you know, where she was, what was happening. And then when I called the, the market center, I was able to, to pinpoint the agent who uh, was the right guy for the job. And sure enough, he had the thing sold in like 30 days. But that's just another example of how you can use this, guys. Um, think outside the box, you know. So, so let me check for questions because we're I think we're pretty much wrapped, here, guys, wrapped up here, guys, as far as what we want to show you. So if you have questions, now's the time to ask. And if you want to, Shannon to be part of your team, or you'll be part of Shannon's team, move out <laughs> to Beverly Hills, <laughs> okay? <laughs> get ready to get ready to work. Or if you're in California and you want to uh, strike up a working relationship, I mean, you know, Shannon's where she is. Maybe you're, maybe you're up in the Bay Area and you guys want to collaborate. And I, this is, and I'm telling you this because this is exactly what I did when I first started. I would collaborate with agents from different brokerages. Um, the ones that I knew who I had either trained or I taught, because I used to teach classes to investors directly. And a lot of agents came through the classes and I would, we would share clients with each other. I mean, I did, I learned that to never be afraid to give up a transaction. You can, with investors, you keep the relationship. You don't give up the relationship with investors. You keep the relationship, but you may give up a transaction to something that's 400 miles away and you still get 25% and your client will thank you for it. Oh my gosh. I mean, don't, don't think scarcity, think abundance. So let's, we just generated a bunch of questions. So let me see Shannon what we got here. Okay. Um, hang on one second. Let's see. Oh, Christian's asking, can you explain the color coding? Um, and then how did you import the data into the spreadsheet? So, yes, I'd be happy to explain that. Um, the color coding, there's no, there's no real science to it. It's just something that I did. Green means go, red means stop. And obviously certain areas, um, you know, appeal, seem more appealing than others. So stronger green meant, you know, pay more attention to here. Um, if I put a red square, it meant stop. Um, and this is for vacancy rates. Again, these are these are estimates, so it doesn't necessarily mean like you know don't consider the area. It it was just for me to call out in my mind, you know, as I do more research into those areas, you know, to take a look for it and actually see if if the vacancy rate is high and if it's an issue. Mm -hmm. um, rent control, Gary, that's like a subject actually that I I would love to hear you talk more about. Um, yeah. You know, LA City and Beverly Hills, uh, West Hollywood, and Santa Monica, I believe, have rent control. So obviously that's something to take into consideration um, for income properties. But Gary, yeah. I think you have a different, a different approach that maybe can help you sort of circumvent that a little bit. But that's really all that the, the color coding is. Um, so you can use your own. It's just to make it easier for you to like look at, look at and compare the different areas. Um, where I got the information, I'm just going to switch screen really quick. Um, go back to your reports that you pulled from census mm -hmm. 
And there's going to be some information from each. So on housing, I believe I got the vacancy rates, the housing stocks. So how many, um, you know, two. to renter um, percentages, owner to non-owner occupied, excuse me, percentages right here. So I would just pull that data and plug it into my spreadsheets here, which yes, was very tedious, but very worth it. <laughs> well, I, think, I think once you've Hope, done it too, Hopefully I, that makes sense, what I did there. Yeah, it does. And I think the other thing too, Shannon, now that you have it built, Doing refreshes is much easier because you've already got the, the spreadsheets filled. Now you can just import the data going forward, you know? You can do a, um, we've done this with um, uh, creating area, area reports through MLS. So once you, once you create the first time, uh, there's an import function. You can create a report and just in the format, whatever. Uh, you have to parse it out in the same format as your spreadsheet then you simply do an import one fell swoop and you don't have to do it cell by cell, but you have to build it initially first, right? So hopefully that helps Chris answer your question. And hey, we did have a question too from um, uh, Jerry's a brand new student up in uh, uh, Kitchener, Canada. So Jerry, what I think we'll do is I think we will do a separate session uh, just on stats. Canada. I've used it before myself, you know, we've, my, we bought properties up there, but I, I don't have access to the, uh, the MLS up there. So I might use somebody who's pretty new in the system up there, uh, but not not um, not like new, you're brand new, Jerry, but maybe it's like Lewis is on. So Lewis, if you would, let me know, Lewis, if you've used StatScan, I think you have, I think you and I talk about that. But what we can do is we can do a session just for the, just for our Canadians. I've got to teach still at um, Newmarket in Ottawa. So this would be ideal. Um, so Lewis, if you're on, let me know if you'd be willing to, to uh, do that and we can help out guys like Jerry and some of the other folks up in uh, Barrie and, and Oshawa, I just talked there too. Uh, we'll do a Canadian version. Um, and we also have to, we have to look at the, uh, I know CREA, Canadian Real Estate is, and Agent Association is the, is the uh, organization up there for realtors. Um, but again, because I'm not a member, I don't have access to the tools. But Jerry, what I believe is what I've seen is there's a similar reporting tool because the NAR, CRAA is actually the, what NAR set up um, to provide all the tools for a Canadian agent. So what, what I'm getting at is I want to have a, uh, bring somebody like on like Shannon, I'm thinking maybe Lewis, uh, Ray Sepp may be the guy to do it. So I'll keep you posted on that, Jerry, and anybody else that's pretty new from Canada. So let me check one more time on questions here. Hang on one second. Um, okay, the color coding. There's a lot of people are just saying thank you, Shannon, <laughs> for doing this. So, um, yeah. So, oh, Lewis, great. So, what I'll do, Lewis, is I know I know you're coming to Boston, but before that, I think next week what we'll do is. Um, oh, my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? Oh, so uh, what I'll do, guys, is um, I'm I'm on vacation this week, but it's like a working vacation. Next week, I'm going to be with. Uh, two sides of my family, my mother's side and my uncle's side, they're in a huge family reunion in, in, in the Honor Banks of North Carolina. In this area where they're so remote, you have to, there's no roads. You literally have to drive, four-wheel drive to get to your, your beach house and there's horses everywhere. It's just crazy. But when I was there before, guys, there was like literally no cell phone reception. So I'm going to be restricted to email next week. But in any case, what I'll do, so Lewis, is I'll reach out to you first. We'll get something set up and then we'll do something similar for, the, for our Canadian students up there. Um, because even though there's there's a lot of um, joint activity going on, some of the systems are definitely unique and different. So yeah, okay. Let me check for other questions. I think we're okay, Shannon. Hey, Shannon, I, I gotta tell you that was a I was really awesome, and I I can't thank you enough for for doing this. I mean, you're such a fun person to hang around. You're smart, and I just you know you're like my you're like my you and Chris are probably my two gold star students out there. And uh, there's lots of other students from the area, but I mean, just literally embracing everything that we talk about and, um, and applying it. So kudos to you and I'll, I'll have more referrals coming your way too, hopefully in the next couple of months. So. Well, thank you so much for your kind words. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all you do for us. It's really, it's life-changing stuff. So Thanks. we appreciate it.
Well, thank you. Oh, speaking of more stuff, guys. Um, so for some reason, you've all heard me talk about dentists. I don't know what it is, but ever since I was in California, I've been called from a lot of dentists who have podcasts. I've been on interview like four different dental podcasts. And guess who I'm promoting? <laughs> all of us, all of you guys across the U.S. and Canada. So in any case, um, some of those podcasts have started going, I mean, over like 26 different countries now. It's crazy. And I actually had a guy set up a call with me already from Florida. Um, so look for some referrals coming in from, from dentists from around U.S. and Canada and other foreign investors. So it's really starting to take off, and I'm so glad. I didn't anticipate it, but um, we did podcasts really to help our, help our consumers. But it looks like this is going to be a big boon for all, uh, all the investors. So if you don't have your license, you may want to get your license. If you already have your license, um, say plug into the community site because we're going to start putting those guys on there. We did uh, just recent decision, um, allow the dentist to go on there and look you guys up. Um, I think right now there's probably close to 3,000 of us around the U.S. and Canada. And I think... Um, People who are actively on the site is like 377. That's that's a huge advantage here. There's not any competition out there is what I'm getting at. So in any case, thanks, Shannon, for uh, saying that because I wanted to, to uh, remind people of that. So in any case, you guys have a wonderful evening and afternoon wherever you are and look forward to seeing you next week, by the way, which will be the, uh, oh, the 24th, I'm sorry. So it'll be Wednesday again. No, today's Thursday. It'll be next Wednesday, the 24th. If you have a particular subject you want to talk about, please just type it in, guys, and let me know. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, this is from Nick Regan. Nick Regan Regan say, my dentist said she wants to invest, but just bought her business. It's funny you mention it. Hey, hey guys, check this out. Just for example, California. Dentists, when they first get out of dental school and get their license, automatically are approved for a million-dollar business line of credit. And as long as they okay. buy properties that are in a, a corporate name, um, they can use that money for that. Sometimes they're buying a building to put to practice in. So, uh, so keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> okay, we're, we're out of time. Shannon, thank, thanks a million. Um, give me a shout out, phone call, text, email, anything you need. Just let me know what you need for me. And that goes for everybody here. I'm glad to help you. And uh, Todor, yeah, Todor, this is definitely recorded, and you're going to get the recording the next day. Um, Listen, guys, God bless you and your families, and uh, we will see you uh, uh, next week. And th thanks again, Shannon. Thank you so much. You guys take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.